Well, folks, Donald Trump, obviously not having a good time. None of his friends having a good time right now. Everybody getting hit with a subpoena like it's Oprah coming out and saying, you get a subpoena and you get a subpoena. So joining me to break down just all of the insanity uh, surrounding Trump world is Heather Digby Parton from Salon.com. So Heather, I don't even know where we start. Do, do, do we start with the 40 subpoenas? Do we talk about Jeffrey Berman? It's, it's been a crazy hell of a week just this past oh. week. <laughs> It's it is it is nuts and it's getting nuttier. I mean, and there's a lot of nutty stuff going on. But I mean, the 40 subpoenas, I think, is a good place to start because that's sort of the big case that we don't really know anything about. And in fact, when I was reading a story in The New York Times, when I, you know, I guess it was Maggie Haberman, they, they broke that story that they had issued the 40 subpoenas. Uh, or, or that they, they were they were actually, I guess it was the issue in the 40 subpoenas. And I'm reading through the story and it's like suddenly I'm going, okay, now they're going to look at um, Trump's super PAC. And they're also talking about the elector scam. And they've got lawyers involved sort of on both of those things on the super PAC and on the elector scam. And they're, they're putting out these subpoenas all over the country. It's not just in DC, it's happening, you know, various people around the country. And I'm reading through it and I'm going, and especially when I get to this part about the super PAC and all the money that they collected under, you know, false pretenses, I'm looking at it and I'm going, oh my God, this reminds me of reading Watergate stories when they were first breaking them, right? I mean, you'd get this, there's a grand jury and there's a slush fund and there's, you know, and, and it would come out piecemeal and you couldn't really put the whole thing together, but it was, it, it ended up being, of course, once we read all the president's men and then saw the movie that they were saying, follow the money, which is what they were doing. Well, that's what's happening here. And I'm reading that and I'm going, oh my God, they're following the money. And, you know, we had, we had little hints of this in the January 6th committee hearings they brought it up, but they didn't really follow up, although it looks like they're going to in the subsequent hearings that are going to happen this fall. Um, but I was I, I was just so struck by the fact that here's these stories that have all these webs that we don't exactly know how they converge, but it sure looks like the Department of Justice is trying to figure that out by taking these people into the grand jury. I mean, we just found out that Mark Meadows is cooperating with yeah. the Department of Justice. <laughs> um, so it's, something's happening there. And I think that it's really, really interesting. And I think that it could be a key to a number of things in ways that we don't actually even understand. And, and I think it has to do with the money that was flowing through uh, that, you know, that post January 6th, you know, cash cow that Trump put together and, and even before to fight the steel, you know, to stop the steel, that stop the steel pack, which then turned into a different pack and all this money that's been flowing around. So that's when I think people should really keep an eye on. I mean, I'm sure that that everyone will. And, and as more stories come out, we're only hearing little bits and pieces of it from people who were called before the grand jury. So we only, you know, it's only, you know, little, little things that people are choosing to share. So we'll see what happens there. But I find that fascinating because that could be, uh, that's where the conspiracy is, right? That's the conspiracy. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, 40 subpoenas at once, which is essentially what happened, that, that is huge. And, and so part of me wonders, because obviously we've got this so-called 60 day rule, right? The DOJ right. likes to not do anything big with any kind of political people 60 days before an election. It's not really a rule. It's just, I guess, a unspoken thing at the DOJ. So part of me thinks, okay, maybe they just said, okay, we got to get all these out now so we can be quiet for the next two months. So that's mm -hmm. a possibility. The other is, Maybe we're going after racketeering charges here. Maybe we've Could got a be. RICO uh, situation and we've got to get everybody at once. We can't mm -hmm. wait and do, let's do these two guys now. Let's do these two next week. They said, we got to move and we got to move fast. So mm -hmm. we don't know anything. It, it could be something completely different from any of that. But I, I do think that, you know, one of the things we got to pay attention to is the fact that they moved very quickly against 40 individuals or, you know, some people may have gotten two subpoenas, but, you know, a lot of people, a lot of subpoenas in a very short amount of time, they know something. The DOJ knows something. They got a plan yeah. and we don't know what that plan is. And it, it, it gets frustrating because all we can do is speculate. Okay. Why now? Why so many? 
Mm-hmm. So it's so hard to sit and wait patiently like like good little people because oh, we want to know because, God, we've been pushing for a year like Merrick Garland, do something, do something. And now he's done all this. And it's like, but OK, but also just tell us what it is to because we <laughs> need know, to know. Right. And, you know, the, the truth is, is that we may not know if they don't come up with anything, if they end up going to the grand jury and then nobody, do, you know, the grand juries don't return any indictments then it goes silent, right? I mean, there's no way to know what it was that they got. And, you know, that's the way the system works and it's fair enough. If, if there's nothing there, there's nothing there. But, it, you know, the fact is, is that we actually do know certain things because of the January 6th committee, which has been public. And we know that, that you know, there was a lot of shenanigans going on around the, the fake electors. I mean, this is well known. And, and in fact, Donald Trump had an interview with Hugh Hewitt he just had this interview with Hugh Hewitt and he said in there, he goes, the fake, there is no such thing as a fake electors. I had nothing to do with it and there's nothing wrong with it anyway. It's done all the time. <laughs> and he really said that it's done all the time. Yeah, you know, actually, no, Don, it's not done all the time. It was, you know, you were conspiring, by the way, to commit the most audacious, ele- uh, you know, vote fraud in American history, which is essentially what he was doing. And of course, he knew about it. And there are people who know he knew about it. So, you know, he's obviously very concerned about that, very concerned about that. If he was mentioning it on the uh, on the Hugh Hewitt show, it's something that's in the back of his mind. And of course, he says, I knew nothing about it in any way. It was fine. So, you know, typical Donald Trump to him. <laughs> and it is fun, too, to think about the fact that these subpoenas that came out, uh, as far as we know, these aren't even related to the documents, right? This is. Oh, I don't think they are. Yeah. This is a different grand jury. <laughs> I think it's a completely different case. So this you, is the January. We don't know what the January 6th cases. These are very interesting. The ones that we now know are happening that are looking at the conspiracy. I mean, obviously, there are a ton of cases that have to do with the insurrectionists. And those are ongoing and people are going to jail and they're actually, you know, being sentenced and what have you. These are <clears throat> January 6th cases that we know, I mean, we know that they they um, actually searched Jeffrey Clark, uh, the the DOJ, you know, minion who was in there that Trump wanted to, to put in there in fire Jeffrey Rosen, who was the acting AG at the time, and to, you know, to help him with his uh, overturning of the election. You know, we know that they've done that. John Eastman, who, by the way, was, you know, the guy who was who was sort of behind the fake elector scheme. And he was in close contact with Trump. I mean, we know that. We know that he and Rudy Giuliani and the whole crew were all working together. So that isn't that is that is one of the cases that we know that they've been pursuing. And they and they and they actually subpoenaed all these fake electors who, you know, people who participated in that scheme a while back. Now they're they're doing it with some new people, some people that we hadn't even heard about came up in these 40 subpoenas. And some of them are lawyers who were also working later at Trump's super PAC, which makes you feel like, oh, there's some money being exchanged here, right? Somebody's getting paid. (laughs) People are getting paid to do this. And that changes the whole thing. It's like what you're saying. You know, this is sort of racketeering kind of stuff. And so, I mean, we don't know any of this, but we do know that there are there are more. And there's actually, I think, more than one grand jury, if I'm not mistaken. And I might be. And maybe some of your audience will, will you know, know better than I in this. But, you know, that there's more than one grand jury looking into those to those case, those January 6th conspiracy cases. And, and what that means, I don't know. But it seems as though some of the, 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 the subpoenas had different had different grand juries that were attached to them. So, you know, we'll find out at some point, I'm sure what all that means, but it does mean that that stuff's going on along with the insurrectionist stuff. And then you've got all this stuff down in Florida and this is all federal. We still haven't even talked about New York or whatever, right. and, and, and Georgia where there's a whole bunch of other legal stuff going on. I mean, the heat is really on Donald Trump and you know, I hesitate to get too enthusiastic because he spent a lifetime squirming out from under the law, right? I mean, he's been a criminal for many, many years uh, and he's always gotten away with it. So, you know, it seems like it's impossible that this kind of thing would not eventually, something wouldn't actually get him, but I'm not, I'm not counting my chickens because I, (laughs) you know, the guy has a talent for, um, for getting away with murder. I mean, he just does and he knows it. 
Yeah, I, I, we've we've gotten our hopes up so many times in the past. Exactly. And <clears throat> when you look at all this, you, you do want to get your hopes up because you do think like, look, there's no way, there's no way, but but there will be a way. <clears throat> And if there is, he'll find it. But I, I do think it's interesting because you brought up a point that I've thought as well, that with the Trump PAC, the Save America PAC, that raised $100 million, uh, it's raised well over that by this point, but it raised $100 million in record time. Right, and, and when you have these individuals in Trump's orbit that were reaching out to state level lawmakers saying, listen, we need your help with this. We need you to do this. We need you to do that. It's not unthinkable that they may have also said, by the way, we got a big old super PAC over here with $100 million in it. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you always need campaign money, right? I mean, we can look a wink and a nod type thing. Absolutely. I, I absolutely think that is a possibility. So I hope I hope they're going down that route. And of course, if something like that did happen, there, there's got to be witnesses. They were stupid enough. They probably put it in text messages or emails. You know, Could we, very well be. <laughs> we've seen I mean, it. really, you know, or recorded themselves. I mean, you know, look at Donald Trump, that Georgia case. He's on tape <laughs> saying it. You know, I mean, did they not think that anybody might record them saying these things? I wouldn't be surprised if there are other recordings of people. Look, there were people who were having the heat put on them hard during that post-election period and, and trying to overturn the election, trying to get them to, you know, to do all kinds of things. I mean, we've seen all that. January 6th committee had tons of that, that evidence. Uh, some of those people probably did, just like, uh, you know, Raffensperger did down in Georgia. He recorded that call because he knew that it was weird <laughs> that the president of the United States was calling him up. And he knew that there was a lot of heat being put on people that, you know, Lindsey Graham had been calling up and going, hey, you know, can't we throw out some of these votes? I mean, you know, this was going on and it, I'm sure it wasn't only Georgia. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's recordings. I mean, if I, I were in that position, I'd want to record it. Just, you know, cover your, you know, cover your back. I mean, you wouldn't want to be in a in that position. And you're absolutely right. There could very well be quid pro quos all over the place. That's how Trump operates. And he never made any any bones about it. I mean, the, you know, look at the the Zelensky call, you know, hey, scratch, scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. I'll send you some weapons, you know, I mean, that's what he does. Uh, in fact, Jeffrey Berman, we haven't talked about that yet, but the the former prosecutor in, uh, who's written a book from SDNY, uh, who was the prosecutor that was fired by Trump and Bill Barr. Bill Barr did that when he fired Jeffrey Berman. He offered him the, the job at the SEC. He said, you know, hey, I, I can offer you another job. You know, well, I'll fire you. Well, you know, you can quit and then we'll put you over at SEC. It'll all work out. I mean, that's that's those are bribes. I mean, I hate to say it, but that's, that's what they are. You and know, that's what they do. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and while we're on the topic of Berman, obviously, we, you know, let, let's go ahead and talk about those revelations from his new book, because those are pretty substantial, right? Okay, so you got Berman. Uh, he's the guy <clears throat> ended up going after Michael Cohen, uh, ended up, which Republican was it? Was it Chris Collins, I think? Yeah. Um, so then, according to the book, he gets the call from Bill Barr. Uh, hey, listen, you got our guys. Uh, it's only fair at this point. You know, we need you to go after... Um, was it Greg Craig, I believe? It's trying to even, even it up, I think he said, yeah. Yeah, yeah, even it up. And <laughs> Berman was like, no, there's 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 nothing on this guy. Like, we, we looked at it, there's nothing here. I'm not just going to prosecute somebody. So this is a big deal because this is exactly, you know, Trump had his DOJ doing exactly yeah. what they accuse Biden of having his yeah. DOJ do right now. It's crazy. It is crazy. And, you know, that's one of those things. I mean, whenever you see that, where, it, it, you know, it's that this book is a revelation. I actually, this is one that I actually read. And it is a revelation about how that DOJ operated under Bill Barr. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that Berman talks about that does that we can, sort of came before and were external cases. But the, the Bill Barr stuff, when Bill Barr came in, basically, he did operate as Donald Trump's, um, you know, henchman in the Department of Justice. And he was constant, and we, we already knew this to some extent. We knew about the Roger Stone you know, case. We knew about the Michael Flynn case, which Barr intervened in and stopped them from being prosecuted after it was clear that they had you know, committed the crimes. Um, and he had been operating in that way for some time. 
but a, under you know beyond that the stuff they were doing this like the greg craig thing john Kerry, who was former presidential candidate senator from massachusetts and they and who had been the secretary of state he was over there talking to some people in Iran and, and Trump went nuts on Twitter and said he's violated the Logan Act, which I'm sure he didn't even know what that was. Somebody told, you know, Stephen Miller or somebody told him and uh, Barr gets on the horn, says, yeah, we're going to, you know, it's time to, to look into John Kerry, want to prosecute him for the Logan Act. And everybody's going, nobody gets prosecuted for the Logan Act. People are going all over the world all the time talking to people. You can't do that. Um, but, it, you know, they were ready to do it based pretty much solely on Trump's temper tantrum, it appears, on Twitter. They were actually, so all, you know, we saw, this is only one office, right? But we saw Trump, you know, year after year after year, calling for people to be arrested, calling for people to be investigated, calling for people to be fired. You know, he did this over and over again on his Twitter feed. And it now appears pretty clear that in many cases, the Department of Justice moved on that stuff. And they actually went and tried to to accommodate him. The Greg Craig thing is particularly awful because it was purely what for you know what what you, what what Barr said to Berman. It was this you know hey you've gone after after Chris Collins you've gone after Michael Cohen it's time to even things out meaning it's time to go after a Democrat that was the sole motive. So they picked Greg Craig who had been in the Obama White House, and of course, so that made him a prime target. You know, he, he, they hated everything Obama. And they, they you know, and, and Berman said, as you said, said, you know, look, there's no case here. He didn't really violate that law. We looked into it, we investigated him, there's nothing there. And then there's this false statement charge that they, that they said he had made. And he's going, you know, that's really thin. I don't think we can prove that. We're just, we can't go after this guy. So what did, what did Barr do? takes it to a different office, took it to the DC office, which said, oh, well, okay. They, you know, <laughs> saluted smartly and said, okay, we'll do it. And the case went before a jury and he was acquitted in five hours. And those are complicated cases. I mean, you know, the, the ferry, but this one wasn't, I mean, it was pretty clear. And so where does Greg, you know, Greg Craig, I mean, I, can he sue the government? I don't think he can, but if he could, you know, he should, because, because that's, that's an outrage that they did that. And I'm sure that, you know, that, that he's, that's not the only one. So, you know, as you were saying, you know, they're now, now Trump is out there and they're all claiming that Biden has weaponized the Department of Justice and he's turning it into a, you know, they're all his political henchmen and blah, blah, blah. Well, no, he's not. Biden doesn't, didn't do that for obvious reasons. He's not going to do it. They took their good, sweet time. Merrick Garland did everything you could possibly do to get Trump to voluntarily accede to their request to return all the documents. And had he done that, I doubt that they would, they would, you know, if he had just said, oops, you know, walked out with a bunch of stuff I didn't even know what I had <laughs> here, take it. I'm, you know, my apologies. Even all the classified stuff, I have a feeling the Department of Justice went, eh, you know, let's just let this go, you know, let's do, let's not do anything. But he didn't. He he went out of his way to hide it. It turned out that he lied in 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 the uh, responses to the Department of Justice, saying, "Oh, we've searched everywhere." Then they go in and they find all this stuff in his office. I mean, they, they're that's why they're looking at obstruction because it really looks like he was trying to hide something. So you know, that's not. Biden, and that's not the Department of Justice trying to do, you know, trying to, you know, the witch hunt or whatever. This is actual serious stuff with these classified documents. But because Trump would have done that, because I hate to, you know, a lot of Republicans would have done it. Just, you know, use the Department of Justice to go after their political enemies. And Trump did it when he was that. He just assumes that everybody does that. Yeah. That's how he, that's how he thinks. He just thinks he's a criminal. <laughs> So he assumes everybody else is a criminal too. And all of the people around him apparently feel the same way. So, you know, that, and it's beyond projection. It's that I think he genuinely, it's not like he's sitting there consciously going, ha ha, you know, well, I'll, say, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say that they're weaponizing the DOJ. He really believes they are because that's what he would do. And, and, and that's what he did. According to Jeffrey Berman, we see now that he actually did that over and over again. I mean, it's astonishing. And yet he's the, the front runner for uh, 2024. And, you know, we have the, the Senate that's now said, OK, we're going to investigate this, which the timing of that, obviously, it's because, OK, now we know this. Now we have to investigate it. But it does make me wonder, OK, uh, we're going to have new new Senate 
members, uh, possibly some current Senate members, gone in just a couple months here, right? The new Senate gets sworn in in January. So how can they actually even do an investigation right now? You know, that, that that's what strikes me as odd. I know it's good to announce it, and I desperately need it to happen. But do they even have time to do an investigation right now before the midterms? You know, are they even going to have the same committee members come January? So it's I think it's a difficult time for them to really start an investigation. With the way the polls are looking, obviously Democrats probably going to retain control, maybe gain a couple more seats. So maybe it's something they just need to say, listen, we're going to do it. We're going to kick it to January. But then you do run the risk of if you don't get the majority, then you're you're screwed. So I don't know. It's they're they're in a bad position just because of timing wise, because mm-hmm. you know you gotta investigate this, because this is totally potentially criminal stuff, abuse of power. Right. But this is we're in, you know, deep campaign mode right now. Can you even do it before time runs out? That's that's a big question. I don't know. I mean, I thought actually I thought the same thing. I was kind of going, wow, it sure would have been good if Burma's book had come out six months ago, yeah. you know, then maybe. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's, that's the way it goes these days. You know, everything waits for the books and then we find out when it's already too late. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I guess they're hoping that they retain control, in which case they can, you know, take up the investigation. They can start it and then finish it after in the next Congress. You know, but if they don't, uh, you know, if they can't, well, that's it anyway, right? I mean, there'll be nothing. In fact, they'll be impeaching Biden. I think within, you know, I don't know, first, <laughs> first month, uh, we'll get an impeachment um, vote out of the House if they take the House. So, you know, maybe they're just, and, and you know, I guess it's a good, good, you know, uh, electoral sort of, you know, announcement to sort of say, hey, look, you know, we're looking into this, as they should, by the way. Yeah. I mean, of course they should. This is this was a this was an absolute and you know here you got Bill Barr who's been running around, you know. Granted, it's great that he's out there saying you know that that the um, you know that the 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 case in Mar-a-Lago is a crock and you know this is all he committed he probably he probably broke the law and you know Bill Barr is you know really coming at him hard and yeah you know, glad to see it maybe there maybe he's one of those trusted voices. <laughs> For a few people on the right that might be persuaded. I mean, you know, fine. But come on. This guy enabled everything Trump did for year after year after year, using the Department of Justice, letting Trump's cronies, all the people who were trying to do, who were trying to overturn the election that Barr supposedly reared up and said, you know, I'm sorry, I can't do this. Well, Barr was the one letting them off the hook for years. People like Mike Flynn, people like Roger Stone. And, and interfering and all this stuff and kind of constantly sort of, sort of bring, you know, deriding the Department of Justice and deriding the FBI uh, for their cases, doing that stupid Durham, Durham investigation, the, the, you know, the, uh, the investigation into the oranges of the, of, of the Russia investigation, as Trump said, um, which is now it looks like this week we found out that that appears to be closing, not with a bang, but a whimper. And, uh, you know, that was another thing that Barr did to appease Trump, to give him that, that, and I don't know how much money they spent and how much time they wasted on that thing. But, you know, Barr was involved in all that stuff and he does not get to rehabilitate himself. I'm sorry, you know, I'm open to never Trumpers and I'm always, you know, I'm sort of, hey, welcome aboard. You know, we need, we need people, we need converts. We need people to, to reject this, this Republican party. So great. Come on. You know, I mean, I'm always trust but verify with these people but nonetheless bill barr no 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 not that guy you know he's too went too far you you and i are absolutely on the same wavelength because my next question to you was going to be about the durham investigation because as you said (laughs) we found out this week the grand jury's actually already expired like his grand jury is is finished so all that's left is his final report and because the grand jury is gone there's no more criminal indictments coming down the pipeline Nobody's going to be arrested. They have mm-hmm. zero convictions. And, and technically, only one person even went to trial from what Durham found, uh, yeah. w- was exonerated, acquitted, uh, Michael Sussman. <laughs> right. So the investigation, three years, because the guy started in 2019. Here we are, 2022. It's over now. Three years, twice as long as the Mueller investigation. Yeah. 
not a damn thing to show for it. And this was supposed to be, as conservatives told us, we're going to blow the roof off. We're going to expose everything in the deep state. This is going to take down Clinton, Obama, uh, oh, hell, yeah. may maybe even Jimmy Carter. We don't know who all was involved <laughs> in this. And and it, it's, it's over. A and it was almost a footnote in the news, like, oh, by the way, the Durham investigation's over. Nothing I know. I, well, that was irritating. It, it, you know, all these conservative outlets, conservative pundits, hell, even some of the people on the or who pretend to be on the left, hyping this thing up. Uh-huh. Y'all owe us, everybody, a big giant apology. And look, I said from the beginning, I support this Durham investigation because I was 100% confident it was going to end like this with nothing yeah. to show for it. And, you know, okay, well, it'll pat on my back, I guess. I was right. But that's why I don't get scared when Republicans say, like, we're going to investigate Fauci. Oh, absolutely. Do it. Go waste have waste it. your time on it. You know, whatever you want to do. We're going to investigate Hunter Biden's laptop. Go for it. The FBI's had the contents of that for two years. Uh, Tucker Carlson says he has it. Rudy Giuliani has it. Matt Gates has the contents. If there was criminal <laughs> activity there, we'd know about it. There's some pictures that are not flattering. Well, that's what it's really all about. Exactly. They want to show those pictures. <laughs> you know, they want to show those pictures. So they'll have some investigations and they are going to do this. They're going to have, it's going to be, if they take over the House for sure, and I'm sure it'll happen in the Senate too. We've got Lindsey Graham out there who's just completely lost his mind, if, as if he hadn't already. But, you know, he's got, gone even farther into the abyss this week. Um, but, you know, they're all going to run investigation. They don't have an agenda. They're not running on doing anything. There, there's no, there's, there's, there's nothing. I mean, literally, in, in the last presidential election, they didn't have a platform. They just said, whatever Donald Trump wants is what we want and that was and literally that's what they said so you know this is they don't have anything else to do so what they will do is do put on a big bunch of show you know to try again it's that we have to even it out because the january 6th committee did hearings and they were very successful hearings and people were very impressed with them and they have actually seemed to have made a difference in public opinion at least to some extent uh you can bet they're going to do hearings and hearings and hearings. And we know how they do hearings. We've seen it before. We saw them grill Hillary Clinton for 14 hours. And, but as you say, Dr. Fauci, who they're going to go after, they're going to assassinate his character even more, which I find pretty horrifying and disgusting. But he's a very strong person and he will handle it. He'll He's a stand-up guy and he'll be able to, to stand up to whatever they do to him, I'm sure. It's disgusting. And Hunter Biden, they just want to show a bunch, they just want a bunch of pictures circulating of Hunter Biden doing crack and, and nude and, you know, the kind of stuff that's in that laptop. They want to show that around because that's their, you know, if you watch Tucker Carlson, which I'm sure don't do it if you can, don't have to because it's awful, but they, they do that stuff all the time. And he's the one sort of setting the agenda. That's the Hunter Biden thing. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Hunter Biden is a guy who traded on his father's name to get some jobs. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, we, you know, have you heard anything about Donald Trump Jr. lately? I mean, what has he done that doesn't trade on his father? What would that guy be if it weren't for him? Well, well, and, right? and you know what? Here's the fun part about the Hunter Biden story is when he got these jobs or these contracts, including the one with China, which is the one they think, oh, that's the one. Ooh, it, yeah. it was from, um, it began in October of 20, or excuse me, August of 2017, and it expired in October of 2018. So we're talking about him during a time when Joe Biden was former Vice President Joe Biden and before he was Democratic candidate Joe Biden. He was yeah. a private citizen. So even if he made phone calls and said, hey, give my son a job, that's not illegal. That yeah, is not that. illegal. There's no, I just, I can't even, it's one simple I fact. Am. You can look at the, the, the contracts. They're in his, you know, tax information yeah. and it totally, you know, exonerates him. You may think, oh, well, it's unethical. Sure, but there's unethical stuff that happens all the time. That doesn't mean it's prosecutable. Let it go with the Hunter Biden crap, but they won't. Oh. They never will. No, they, no, they love that. And it's because of the salacious stuff, honestly. The, the rest of that is just a smokescreen. That stuff is, you know, because look, Donald Trump Jr. was doing deals while his father was president. He went up to India and did a full trip over there while 
Trump was in office and was selling condos and doing a development there. And they're all, you know, they brought him, you know, flowers. They greeted him at the airport. I mean, Jay, do you think it's because Donald Trump Jr.'s development deal was so exciting that they brought out the entire upper echelon of the Indian government to greet him? I don't think so. That is the kind of stuff. Look at Jared Kushner. Yep. He just did a $2 billion deal with the Saudis. I mean, you know, of course that, you know, the hypocrisy, we don't even talk about that because they have completely retired the concept. They're shameless. They hypocrisy does not apply to them. They care nothing about about that, but they will use it nonetheless against Hunter Biden because, you know, Democrats do have a sense of shame and they are, you know, uncomfortable with the idea that he was, you know, trading on his father's name to get jobs, even though it's done every day in every field and not just politics. And they're, so they'll, they'll be a little uncomfortable, but they really want to just get those pictures out there. I swear to God, they want to be talking about it because the people, the, you know, the old guys who are watching Fox News every night are sitting there, you know, they're all excited because they get they get to hear about this stuff. I'm, I'm serious. This goes back. You know, I remember watching this step during the, the Clinton stuff. You know, back in the late 90s, yep. <laughs> that was what it was. It was all this, oh, you know, did you hear about the dirty, you know, the dirty, dirty? And they'd talk about it. And it was all, you know, this, that's really what it is. And it gets them all excited. It's the best they can hope for, you know, as far as getting excited. So, I mean, that's that's part of it. And then you got Fauci and you've got and then I, I won't be surprised at all if they impeach Biden. I mean, this is how they think it's, it's our, you know, got to even it out. You know, they they impeach they impeach Trump. Twice. So we've at least got to impeach Biden once. I mean, you know, that's how they think. And so I'm sure I'm sure that that's what's going to happen. It'll be a real circus. And I really hope it I hope they don't win because because of everything. But, you know, even if they can't do much harm, because obviously we still have a Democratic president and they're not going to be able to pass draconian laws or anything. I don't want to see this. You know, we've had enough of this crap. I mean, it is it is, you know, I, I think that the People are sick of it. Everybody but the Trump cult in the country is sick of it. And the more they do this stuff, the more people just kind of turn away. And we can't have that. You know, people have to remain engaged to fight this thing. And it worries me a lot that this clownish kind of disgusting juvenile behavior, like what Ron DeSantis did in in Florida by shipping immigrants from that were in Texas for some reason up to Martha's Vineyard for a political stunt. You know, that works for that sickening little group of people. I mean, it's not not little, it's tens of millions of people, but it's it's a minority uh, of the country, less than 40%, I would guess. They get off on it, but everybody else is disgusted and kind of, you got to be kidding. And that is, that's, that makes people cynical. It makes people withdraw it makes people just feel like you know the whole thing is a you know it's nothing but a pig pen the you know politics and i don't want anything to do with it and that's bad you know that's really bad it it is and you know um i think it was somewhere between three and six months ago uh back when the republicans first started talking about if we take back the house it's going to be nothing but investigations nothing but investigations and kevin mccarthy had said this is a stupid idea if we spend two straight years doing nothing but investigations, we are going to get pummeled in 2024. Yep. You know, this is not going to help us. And, and then recently, a couple of weeks ago, Matt Gates came out and he said, hey, Kevin McCarthy is now on board with mine and Jim Jordan's idea oh to turn every committee into an investigative committee. That is it's it's the brainchild of Matt Gates and Jim Jordan, Beavis and Butthead. Yep. And he, he says <laughs> that now Kevin McCarthy is on board. I don't doubt it. And six months ago, Kevin McCarthy was correct because that's what will happen. Like you said, they may not be able to do any real harm, but during that time, they're also not going to do any good and nothing is going to happen. We'll probably get, you know, yearly budget bills passed, maybe a couple of resolutions. I think we could have government shut down. Yeah, that's they love to do that. Definitely. And and so in 2024, Republicans are going to go to the voters and say, all right, ha, look what we did. Uh, yeah. we, uh, we showed you some pictures of Hunter Biden and, uh, Fauci, <laughs> man, we, we, we really gave it to him there. Yeah. And then the voters are going to say what the, I'm no, my, my wallet is, is, is empty. My <laughs> job is terrible. You have done nothing. And they're going to take it out on Republicans. Kevin McCarthy admitted it earlier this year. Right now he's pretending he didn't do it now, 
but they know what awaits well, he's them. Worried and they don't about, care. McCarthy's worried about not winning, you know, not becoming speaker. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's worried that if he doesn't, because I mean, his caucus is full of a bunch of total nutcases at this point. And if they win back the house, if they win back the house, that's going to be even a bigger, you know, chunk of nutcases. You know, look at the people that they're running. I mean, you know, these are going to be, it's going to be Looney Tunes there. Um, even if they don't win the majority, they're going to have a bunch of new loons in there. I mean, and they're and they're loonier than they've even been in the past. I mean, these guys make the Tea Party look like you know great statesmen. I mean, yeah. you know, they're. I mean, this is this is this is you know, it's they've completely gone off the rails. So yeah, I mean, McCarthy realized, and he if he does win, and he is he is the the speaker, he's at their mercy. I mean, we've seen this happen over and over again. It happened to John Boehner. It happened to Paul Ryan. You know, you don't survive if you if you, you those people will take you down. They don't have any compunction about it. And he knows that. In fact, he lost the speakership to Paul Ryan, partly because of that. And of course, it was also because he shot his mouth off and said they'd run the Benghazi hearings just so they could, you know, could put a dent in Hillary Clinton's approval ratings, <laughs> which was really, really stupid. Yeah, OK, Kev, you know, zip it, you know, loose lips, buddy. Um, but, you know, he's not the sharpest tool in the shed anyway. But, you know, that, that, that of course, he's going to go along with it. it. That is what they want. And that's what their people want. I mean, look at these people that they're that they've got out there in the in this campaign. I mean, we've never seen anything like this. I mean, up in New Hampshire, which is, you know, generally a fairly common sense kind of place. Yes, they have a far right libertarian strain up there. And they've often been, you know, it, you know, put in some pretty hard poor conservatives. This week, they nominated a complete lunatic for the US Senate. And, and another one that was her main claim to fame, she's 25 years old. Her main claim to fame is that she was Kaylee McEnany's secretary. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That, that's her, that, that yep. is her, her experience. So, you know, then that's for the House and for the Senate, they, this other nut, this, this you know, ex retired general who's completely out of his mind, a total Trumper. So bad that Corey Lewandowski told Trump not to <laughs> not to endorse him. And he won anyway. But I mean, th this is what this is what they're dealing with. And so I, you know, I think you're right. I mean, win or lose, I think the Republicans are going to be stuck with some real, you know, nutcases. And that's not going away. Trump is out there, you know, pumping it up every single day. He's starting to to tweet out or truth out, you know, truth social, they call them truths instead of tweets. Uh, he truth out um, QAnon stuff, you know, I mean, yeah. he's not, he's, he's, you know, going, he, he called in to a rally for the January 6th insurrectionists and said that he supported them and he promised to pardon them all if he wins again. I mean, so that, I mean, he's going way, way, way out there too. And, you know, he'll win the nomination if he wants it, I think. I mean, I have never had any doubt that he would win it. Uh, I don't know if he, you know, if he can win the general election. God, hope, God, I hope not. But, you know, I, I suppose anything's possible. But, um, you know, he's, he's way out there. And that's where the party is. So I think you're right. You know, people, hopefully, and I hope they do it this November, too. And, it, you know, it's sort of looking like people are seeing this. Yeah, they're not only seeing the Democrats are getting a whole boatload of stuff done, right? I mean, that there's a huge agenda that's been realized. And Biden has done a lot of things. So they have something very positive to run on. Their accomplishments are manifest. But there's also this the specter of Donald Trump out there getting indicted and getting, you know, getting his house raided and being constantly out there, this chaotic figure and all these nuts that he's endorsed and they're running. You know, you're starting to see that phenomenon that you just described, which is, you know, average Americans who may be independents and maybe some disaffected Republicans kind of going, you know, geez, come on. You know, I mean, kind of, come on, you know, this is this is too much. I mean, we've had enough. I mean, this is this is enough. And if they had just, if, if Trump had just shut his pie hole and laid low and not done anything and just kind of, you know, shut up and not said anything about running again and everything, they might have been able to avoid some of that, but they can't, they can't shut him up. I mean, of course not. And then you've got the lunatics, you know, that are running in these races all over the country. So, uh, you know, I'm hoping you're right, that there's a common sense in, Amer in the American electorate. I mean, we did win the last two elections. I mean, people forget that, yeah. but, but, you know, 
the Democrats did win the last two elections and they won every presidential election popular vote in what the last 30 years. So, you know, they're not the minority in this country. <laughs> so hopefully there should be some common sense coming through here. I hope. Yeah, that's that's basically all we can do right now. <laughs> we, we, we hope the country is smart enough to see what's happening with the Republicans and not vote for them in November. We hope the DOJ comes with indictments against Donald Trump sooner rather than later. We hope all of his co-conspirators go down. But again, all we can do is hope. Listen, Heather Digby, pardon. It is always a pleasure to talk to you. So thank you so much for joining us once again here on Ring of Fire. My pleasure. Anytime. Thanks for having me.